Welcome back to Building Games on AWS. My name is Dylan, and in this series, we'll show you the simplest way to integrate Amazon GameLift with Unreal Engine 4. In this episode, we're going to start building out the backend service using AWS Lambda. First, we're going to log in to our AWS account and reach the AWS Management Console page, which should look just like this on the screen. Next, we're going to type in Lambda and pull this, pull our Lambda service up. And here we are going to create a function. Now the naming convention for this function, you can use whatever you would like, but for our sake, we are going to use GameLiff start game session. Next, we're going to pick Python as the language that we'll be writing this code in. If you prefer a different language, you will be able to write it within one of these languages. But keep in mind that the code that we will provide for you is written in Python. So next we're going to click create function and this will then begin to create the function. This will take a little bit of time, but it shouldn't take too long. Okay, now that we have our function created, the first thing that we are going to do is configure some of the permissions for our Lambda function. This is so that we can access and list the various game fleets and game servers that we have put up onto GameLift in the prior episodes. So to do so, we're going to click on this role name. It's going to open up the IAM Management Console in a different tab. And we'll wait for this to load. Once this loads up, we're going to click Attach Policies. So the, the policy that we use is a custom policy that we have created. So we're going to have to create the policy. Uh, for simplicity's sake, since we've already written it, we're going to use JSON. And then we can go into our GitHub repository, which will be in the link description below. And we are going to copy and paste the game lift policies that we need for our Lambda function. This would entail creating a game session, creating a player session, creating multiple player sessions, getting game session details, getting the game sessions, as well as listing our game server fleets and our game server groups, as well as searching for game sessions. Next, we'll hit tags. This is optional. And then we're going to review. And we'll name this game lift start session policy. All right, we can add a description if you would like. Uh, Unreal session start policy. So what we'll describe it as, and we'll create the policy. Okay. Now that that has been created, we can close this tab out and we can refresh this page and it should load up the policy that we just created if we search game lift session start policy. As you can see, this is a policy that we just created. We'll click here. We'll attach that policy. And once we have done so, we are done with the permissions for this Lambda function. So we're going to close that tab out. And next, we'll go back to the code, right? And here, we'll copy and paste the code that we have once again in our GitHub repository for starting our a game session. So we'll go in, copy, and we can just paste this in. So essentially, we'll walk through what this code does. So we have a couple global variables being our game with fleet ID, which we will grab 
in a moment, as well as our GameLiff Boto3 client, which is the GameLiff API. So in our main Lambda handler, right, we have a response to store the response, and we are going to first find an available game session. This leads us to this function, where essentially it's going to search for game sessions based off your fleet ID. And if there are no available game sessions, it's going to create a game session. This logic here is just a wait for when the game session is active. And once it is active, it will return that game session that it has just created. If there already is a game session created, then it will grab the first game session available and send that back as the game session. Once that is done, it will go and create a player session using the game session ID from the game session that we just got. And it will create a unique player ID and then set that as the return value for your client on the Unreal Engine side. Then finally, it will return that response and it formats it with this function down here, which essentially just converts the date and time to a string. So before, <laughs> so now that we have this code here, we'll just have to get the fleet ID. So what we can do is we can come here, we can search for game lift, right? And we can open that in a new tab. And as you can see, here is our fleet ID. So we can copy that and we'll paste that in right here. We will click deploy. This will deploy it and any changes that you make. Then we will click test this event. It will prompt you to configure a test event, which is relatively arbitrary for what we're trying to do. So we'll just name it test and we can leave these as default. We'll click create. Now that that has been tested, we will click test again so that it can execute. And as you can see, it will give back all the player session data and most importantly, the IP address as well as the port number for your client. And that is pretty much what this Lambda function does. And we'll conclude the end of this video. Once again, as a reminder, all the code found in this video can be found on our GitHub repository page in the link below in the description. That also includes the policies for the permissions of this Lambda function. In the next episode, we'll be adding an API gateway in front of this so that it can be called through an API on the client side of your Unreal Engine game, as well as some Cognito functionality for secure access. So stay tuned and we'll see you all in the next episode. Thank you.